I greet you all in the name of Jesus the Christ. My name is Cherry Mototo, and I'm coming alive from EMI Excellence Christian Center under the leadership of Apostle Kubokwe. And I wanted to take this time to talk to you about the role of the Holy Spirit. It is important as Christian to know the importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives, especially these days in these end times when there are so many things happening, we need the third person of Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Our prayer life can only be effective if we allow him in our lives. Before I read the scripture, let me just make a brief prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that God Almighty, you may help us to understand this word and truth. So that when we approach you, we'll understand that we are approaching our Father. Thank you for your word, and we give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. We are reading from Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. And I'm reading from NIV version. It says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. In other versions it says, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. The Holy Spirit has been at work since the creation of time. When God spoke things into existence, through the way Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, was moving. And the things we see and the things we cannot see came into existence because of the Holy Spirit. Now as the church, we cannot live our life effectively without the power of the Holy Spirit. If there was a need for the Holy Spirit who was hovering when the, the, the very earth we are in was formless, we still need him now as a church. It is very much essential as God's children that we should experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit in our lives. John says, John the Baptist says, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who, who is coming after me is mightier than I. And he carried on to say, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives as a church. It is for this reason Jesus Christ had to command his disciples that they should go to Jerusalem to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus Christ knew that the church cannot move on and start to do its mission without the power of the Holy Spirit. And when the day of Pentecost arrived, the Bible says they were all together in one place and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them 
as they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We need the Holy Spirit. The Bible says while they were there waiting, he came upon them and he started to speak in other tongues. Speaking of other tongues is an evidence that one has been baptized by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who was upon the earth is now in you and he's able to help you from day to day. Jesus Christ himself, when he started his journey, his ministry, when we read the book of Luke chapter 8 and chapter 4 from verse 18, the Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord, that this was the words of Jesus Christ himself. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of the sight to the blind, to set liberty to those who are oppressed. When we read the first verse of the same chapter, you realize that Jesus Christ had to go and face the enemy in the wilderness. But the Bible says the power of the Holy Spirit was upon him because the Holy Spirit is a force and he cannot be resisted and he cannot be resisted to a point that he cannot win. The Holy Spirit is always a winner. It's for this reason that Jesus Christ was bold enough when he went out into the wilderness to face the enemy. He knew that victory was upon him because the Holy Spirit himself was upon his life. Jesus Christ, according to the book of John 14, from verse 16, he promised us the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit was working in his life from city to city where he was proclaiming the word of God, he knew as a church, at some point, when he will be gone to heaven to be with the Father, he knew that the church will need the Holy Spirit. He says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever in the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit by that time was just upon people. But this time Jesus Christ says he will dwell in us. The Bible says greater is he in us than the one in the world. And I believe the power of the Holy Spirit who has come to reveal Christ himself in us is greater in us. And he makes Jesus Christ greater in our lives. And that fulfillment of that promise came during Pentecost. And we thank God that since the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the life of the church, the church has never been the same. The church is able to go out there to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ boldly because the power of the Holy Spirit enables us as the church. Church, ladies and gentlemen, we need the Holy Spirit in our daily lives. We cannot live without Him. Now I want to talk about the role now He's playing in our lives as people, especially as God's children. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. And we read this in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 26. It says, Likewise the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought to. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. 
with groanings that cannot be expressed. You know, sometimes we don't know what to pray for. But when we engage the Holy Spirit in our lives, He will be able to touch even the very same things that we cannot touch in our prayers. When we make those prayers with our own understanding, the Holy Spirit knows everything. He knows life. When we, we, we allow Him in our lives, He's able to reveal greater things. He's able to reveal even Christ himself in our lives. So he's there to help us in our weaknesses. The Holy Spirit is there to help us to understand. You know, sometimes we struggle with things in this life. We struggle when even uh, we, we, we want to study. Uh, at times we struggle to understand things. We, we struggle to understand that this life, the Holy Spirit himself will, will help us, will give us that wisdom and, and will help us to understand things better. We read this in the book of Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2. The Bible says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and mind, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. The Holy Spirit in us is able to help us to understand things better. He's there to counsel us. You know, some these, these days, especially, especially since the, the, this pandemic that has befallen us as people of the world, this COVID-19, we, 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 we don't understand, we don't know what is happening, but the Holy Spirit is able to, to even come and counsel us, to say, you know, see, you know this thing will, will pass by. When people say it, you, 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 can, you, can, you cannot just get it, but when the Holy Spirit Spirit himself say it. He, he brings that comfort, that peace, because he's able to cancel us. The Holy Spirit is there to help us to become effective witnesses. The Bible says, as the church, we are the ambassadors of Christ. In the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria and to the end of the world. We can only be effective witnesses like the early church. They will go from one city to the other because the Holy Spirit gave them that witness they were able to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were able to able to, to represent Christ fully. And people will understand and say, these people, they are really God's people. Because they are indeed representing the Lord Jesus Christ. We can only be effective witnesses. We, we, we have been given a great commission to go out there to proclaim the gospel of Christ. Accept and without the power of the Holy Spirit, we cannot be effective. The Holy Spirit is there to help us so that we can walk in God's statutes. It is important that even though when people are confused, they don't know what to do, that as Christians, we live right. And it is by the power of the Holy Spirit that we can do things right. We can live according to God's principles. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 36 from verse 26, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I'll put, I'll put within you and I will remove the heart of the stone from your flesh and give you heart of flesh. I will give you my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. Sometimes we, we try so hard to please the master. We try with our own effort to please the master. But the Bible says the Holy Spirit will help us to walk in God's statutes. 
will help us to obey the rules and the principles of the Almighty God. The Holy Spirit has been shared in our hearts. When we read the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 5, it says, God's love has been poured in our hearts through by the Holy Spirit. We can love better. We can do things better. When we allow him in our lives, when we allow him to come and guide us. As I come to the end of my message, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to urge you, let's allow him to come in our lives. We need that baptism as much as we need repentance, as much as we need baptism of water as Christians, the most important things in this life is that baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because we can do things better, we can pray better, we can live the lives worthy of God when the Holy Spirit is upon us. And I have a few things that I want us and urge you to pray for when I, uh, as I come to the end of my message. And I thank God for his spirit is moving, is hovering. The Holy Spirit is there to make changes in many lives. And I have a few prayer items that I'm going to urge you to pray. The first item that I believe is important, is especially these days, is to pray for our leaders. In the very same city you are, in our country, South Africa, where I'm preaching from, all over the world, we know that COVID-19 has affected us, has, has affected our, our, our lives and our family lives, our economy. And people in leadership, we need to pray for them. We need to pray for our nation that the fear of the Lord will come upon the nations that people will know without God, the Holy Spirit. We cannot do anything. We need to pray for the healing of our nations. People are being hospitalized. There's a lot of hopelessness in our nations. But I know that through God, the Holy Spirit, there will be a healing in our nation. We need to pray for restoration of life. Families have been affected by this pandemic. We need also to pray for this enemy again that has come, which is an abuse, which has become so rife to our nation, an abuse against women and children. I'm going to pray and to thank God for his way and I'm going to encourage everyone to, to continue praying for our nations, for, for nations of the world, Africa. Let's pray for Europe. Let's pray for Australia. Let's pray for Latin America, Northern America. Let's pray for the whole world. Father, we thank you for your weight once again. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are still at work. And I thank you, Father God, for our leaders. I pray that you may reveal yourself in them that, Lord, even as they make decisions, God, you may give them wisdom and understanding to do things right. I thank you that God Almighty the fear of the Lord, the Bible says, is the beginning of wisdom. I pray that the Holy Spirit will touch and convict many hearts that they should fear God in the name of Jesus. I pray God for the healing of many who might be hospitalized on God. I pray for the healing of God upon them. The Bible says by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. And I proclaim and I declare healing upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I thank you, God Almighty, for your grace. It's sufficient, oh God. I pray against this enemy, mighty God, and abuse, the violence that our men today, they've become enemies to their women and children. They are abusing them. I pray, God, even as I pray for forgiveness that you forgive us. And I stand against this demon, this spirit of abuse in the authority of the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I give you honor and I give you glory in Jesus' name. Thank you. Saints, thank you. May the Lord God bless you. Amen. Come and lift up your voice and say, Sweet. Sweet. Sweet.